Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt here, and today I try something yogurt flavored. That's next, a Platt Strength of the Week. So, I got something uh, pretty interesting today. This is the kind of stuff I was thinking about when I wanted to do this series. It's just the weird, wonderful stuff that's in the liquor store that I think we kind of pass by most of us. All right, where's the Jack Daniels? Where's the Budweiser? Blah, blah, blah. But this is the stuff you find when you kind of walk around the liquor store, especially the nice big ones like we have out here. Uh, we are talking today about soju, uh, a Korean spirit. Um, this is a yogurt-flavored soju. I purchased this for $2.99. At today's price, is that stuff to beat? Twelve percent ABV, so uh, in a little bottle like that, uh, probably pretty good bargain. Uh, real quick, what is soju? Soju is Korean. It is a clear, colorless, uh, distilled alcoholic beverage. It traditionally is made from rice, but today they allow other grains. You know, kind of save a little bit of money, but it's traditionally rice-based spirit. Uh, ABV wise, you'll see this sold anywhere from 12% like we have here all the way up to 53% or 106 proof. So ABV wise, we're down to, you know, 12%. That's, you know, a lot of your table wines today all the way again up to 53%, which is, you know, uh, higher octane spirit. So pretty wide range. Since 2007, the sales of 20% and lower soju have really taken off. We'll kind of get to that, in, why that is in a little bit. Now the word soju, S-O-J-U, is Korean and it means burnt liquor. Similar to how we got the term brandy, uh, it came from brandy wine, or, which uh, originally translated into burnt wine. And then it got shortened to just brandy. But uh, similar kind of definition, again, it has to do with distillation, the heat, the burning of a spirit. So found that kind of interesting. Now, we have to be careful when talking about soju because there's a lot of fam uh, similar terms, uh, both sounding and what they mean. Uh, first, there's something called chanju, which is Korean rice wine. Not to be confused with sake, which is the Japanese <laughs> version done in a certain method and not to be confused with soju, which is a distilled spirit. Then we have, uh, the Chinese have something called shoju or uh, baiju, which is their version of a rice-based spirit. Then finally, we have the Japanese equivalent, also known as soju, S-H-O-J-U, uh, and that is the Japanese equivalent. Um, so, you know, the... The Koreans have their own rice wine. The Japanese have their rice wine. Uh, I can't remember what the Chinese... For, and they all also have rice spirits. And they're all kind of similar. But soju, what we have here, S-O-J-U, is the Korean rice spirit. So just uh, kind of keep that clear. Now, how did the Koreans get soju in the first place? Well, you have to think the Mongols. Uh, when the Mongols invaded the Korean Peninsula, they had already been to Persia, the Middle East, the Levant. And actually, if you do your homework, you realize the Middle East was kind of the origins for what we think of as modern day distilling. And they were the first to really kind of uh, perfect certain techniques or whatever. And at the time, they were producing something called Arak, which is our Arak, A-R-A-K, I believe. And it, it was precursor to rum. They brought that technology to the Korean Peninsula, utilized what they had, which is rice, and thus we got soju. So thanks, Genghis Khan, I guess, or whichever one. Uh, here in the U.S., oddly enough, soju is uh, regulated a little bit different than you would think. Uh, in, I believe in a couple of the big states, California and New York and a couple others, they regulate it kind of like wine, the, the lower proof version, this 12%. Similar, again, to wine ABV, uh, they allow this to be sold in places like convenience stores and grocery stores that do not have the full liquor store license. Now, I find this kind of odd because other companies have kind of fought for that space. Right now, we see it with uh, Fireball, the little minis that go in the convenience store. There was a fight early on. What is that? Is that you can't say that contains you know, distilled spirits because you know, we're not going to allow that unless it's soaked you for some reason. I, I find the whole conversation interesting, but uh, that but they do have that little clause in certain states. 
And this has kind of encouraged this uh, product to be uh, marketed a little different. It's kind of gone in similar to vodka, which in a sense, you know, the high proof version could be utilized as a vodka very easily. Um, but in more of the ready to drink cocktail sense, if you, you know, we tried the previous episode of this uh, series, we had the Crown and Cola, which is again, distilled spirit and cola in a ready to drink can. Well, the soju people already kind of have that. They've gotten into the soju cocktails. You can find soju cosmopolitans, what have you, any kind of a ready to drink format. They do a lower ABV version of kind of almost like a flavored vodka to a certain extent. But again, because that lower ABV, they kind of get into other marketplaces or, you know, it's easier to turn into a ready to drink product per se, which I find kind of interesting. Now, this particular uh, brand is Soju Holics. Uh, the company was founded in 2013. I checked the website, not a lot of information. They do claim, you know, they source the finest uh, soju from Korea. I don't know if they're just sourcing soju, bringing it to the States, adding flavor. If the flavor's added over there and they're just the importer, really doesn't kind of go into it, doesn't tell a lot of the story, doesn't even tell me about this great head distiller somewhere making it, but uh, that is their story. And I decided to go with the yogurt flavor because <laughs> when are you gonna drink yogurt flavored anything? So let's give this a try, soju. All right, pours crystal clear. All right. Well, it smells a little yogurty, but it's not. Even though it's a spirit, it's not. It's not high enough ABV to be hot on the nose. So there's really not much of a nose sip of a little yogurt. Let's go ahead and give her a try. That's yogurt, all right. Um, boy, that is hard to put a finger on it. But I now I now know why I've had people tell me this is dangerous. I've had several friends that have either lived over in Korea, you know, were stationed over there, and they they all have kind of a soju story about it. Well, this stuff just creeped up on me, or and I get to see that because. Unlike the, the fermented version of some of these type drinks that get to that 10, 12%, you know, and you add your flavor, I can still tell as someone who owns Bruce Water, I can still kind of get some of the ferment, I can still get some of that yeast flavor and it adds a certain aftertaste to it. Uh, that I, especially once it kind of warms, you get to the bottom of that, it will kind of throw you off. This because it's distilled and then just kind of cut down, usually with reverse osmosis or distilled water, so there's no flavor, and then you add the flavor. You really got flavor and not much, there's not enough alcohol to get any kind of, you know, burn on the palate. Now you will feel a little warming uh, going down. But it is just really kind of that yogurt flavor. You know, the little, the plain Jane kind of yo play, you know, yogurt, uh, but not much of the flavor. So there's nothing kind of telling you, hey, there might be something going, hey, there's something else in this. It might sneak up on you or whatever. Besides a little warming in the chest, you don't notice it. I can, and something like this, I could see definitely being just an easy shooter. Like, I can see this, someone handing you, um, you know, a typical one of the bigger Asian brands of beer, uh, Cass. That's the that's the one I was trying. You need a Cass and a shot of this. I can see those just going down like that, and you're not thinking twice about it, and that's what it sneaks up on you. Uh, but I gotta say, not bad. Um, I don't know if I want to have. I I don't. I got a feeling the hangover on this might be pretty rough. Uh, but overall. Um, not bad. Um, would I recommend this? Yes, with cautionary tales. Like I said, I can already see where they sneak up on people. Um, this might be this might be a fun little thing if you did some kind of you know if you're doing any kind of Korean cooking or something like that, and uh, 
you know, Korean barbecue, and maybe you want to share a brothel with friends. Well, if you had to split that between four or five friends at 12%, you should hurt yourself. So I, I can see where that'd be a great occasion. I don't know if this is a daily drinker, or I, I don't know if I'd ever want to drink a bottle or two of this by myself kind of thing. Uh, but definitely uh, give soju a try. Uh, I'd definitely go with the flavored ones. Just as something a little different, change up. Uh, definitely kind of cool. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please check out the other videos because it lets YouTube know we're putting out all kinds of good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or ideas what to look for in the liquor store, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.